everyone, my name is Araceli Garcia and I am one of the ELD teachers at Workman High School and I also am a facilitator for a method that we call design-based learning which is a form of project-based learning and I wanted to walk you through what I often give my students uh, as an onboarding and also to just establish a little bit more rapport in the class and get students to share a little bit of who they are. So let me go ahead and walk you through a couple of the things that we do here. So first of all, what is DBL? So design-based learning is a way for students to do hands-on 3D objects that uh, represent some type of theme that you might be covering in your unit. This is, for me, a year-long uh, design challenge where students are constantly making things that go along with a storyline of the themes we're covering in my class and this is for my ELA classes and also for my ELD classes. Uh, each design is going to begin with a little scenario and then after the students design and create their creature, their object, um, then you, they get to share out. This is where a lot of the literacy skills come in where they are uh, recording Flipgrid videos or maybe they're writing about it or maybe they're doing a Socratic seminar where they're asking questions. Uh, the goal definitely is to have students have some fun, use that higher thinking uh, skill of imagination, and to work on those literacy skills in a, again, non-threatening way. Uh, again, this part here, you can read that on your own, just gives a little bit more background on design-based learning. And then here are some of my students. Of course, if we were in class, students get to work together. Uh, there is a way to do that through distance learning. Now, with DBL, one of the cool things is that students do not need uh, lots of materials. In fact, they are only supposed to use recyclable goods uh, that they might have at home. So take a look at this list. They are not having to purchase anything. Uh, there are no ready-made kits that they need. Uh, it is, again, just asking them to go around the house and find things that are cuttable, uh, such as, again, uh, foil paper or, uh, you know, some paper cups, things like that, really minimum amount of materials. Notice, again, the little note here. They're not supposed to use any Legos or toys or magazine. Uh, we're really going to challenge them to think of new things. So here's an example of what students might have used, such as toilet paper rolls, again, you know, even seashells, things that they can put together. So for my first challenge, and we do call this a challenge, uh, maybe day one or even week one, I have my students create some kind of an avatar or creature that represents who they are. Now on day one, I have them present, uh, you know, an object that is nearby, uh, let's say a pencil or a paper that might represent a little bit of, of their personality, and then they share out. But then that object turns into this creature. So I always tell my students, okay, your object has transformed into a new body. So I make them create something new. And I, here's the challenge. They're going to plan and create a never before seen avatar uh, that represents what they value. So then I give them this chart here and green is for the needs and then the don't want. So I basically repeat the two ideas. So I tell them again, it needs to be three dimensional. They're not drawing it. They're not making it on a computer. They, you want to get them off of the computer screen. You want them to use that tactile, kinesthetic type of learning, right? That's how it stays in their mind a little bit longer. Um, I always tell them they're welcome to, you know, work with their uh, families there. If they have siblings. Uh, sometimes even parents get involved with wanting to ask questions of what they're doing. So it's a great, uh, rich way to have them connect with their families. Um, I remind them that it needs to represent who they are, not what they like. So if they create a creature that looks kind of like a soccer ball, right? Yes, they might like soccer, uh, but how is a ball kind of like them? Do they move around a lot? Do they feel like they've been bouncing from place to place? Um, do they want to go far, you know, in life, just like a soccer ball, right? Does it have uh, goals to reach? See, uh, again, they could have a lot of fun with explaining how their creature represents who they are. Uh, a lot of use of symbolic colors, especially when I teach my, and I do this with my AP students, my AP Lit students, since we're going to be talking about, uh, again, the craft of writing and using symbolism. I ask my students, be very intentional. Why are you choosing those colors? What are those shapes? Why that texture? So they get to share and present uh, their ideas. 
Uh, I do give them some limitations. So I say keep your creature kind of small so there it fits in your hand. So I would say about five by five. I do ask them to put multiple parts together, right? And here's a big one on the don't wants. I don't want it to be illogical. I don't want it to be invisible or they, it has magic buttons or they're using some kind of fantasy. I definitely want them to explain as if this creature were alive. Uh, one of the ways I present it is I say, if uh, Pixar was making a new Monsters, Inc. movie, what avatar creature would you create for this movie? So uh, make sure it has a way to see, hear, move, right? How does it communicate? I do tell them here that they will be presenting. Uh, maybe they're presenting on Flipgrid. Maybe they're presenting on Zoom breakout rooms or if it's a small class to the whole class. So I let them know that this is a discussion based class. They will be speaking quite a bit. It's not just the teacher talking the whole time. So here's another quick example. And as I said, uh, just for you to know, my DBL method, I use all year long and eventually my students will be making a shelter for the creature. And that's a whole other unit that I do with the idea of home and seeking a home. I often do that with Of Mice and Men or House on Mango Street. Uh, um, and then I move into them building an entire city. And so you can see here where my students have built the city. They've named the city and we have all types of parts such as justice system, a way of transportation, a way, a never before seen way of education. And so it lends itself for a lot of discussions. Uh, the way I did this with distance learning is my students created just a part of the city. Each student was in charge of one section and then they put it together either with a Google slide or some of my students got really creative and uh, worked together through Minecraft. Some of them even used Fortnite, the video game. So again, I can talk more about that if you wanted to find out how you would do that. So students, again, at all levels, whether it's ELD, um, I use this with my AVID classes, I use this with my AP classes. It's just a, another way to get to that abstract thinking and get them to develop those communication skills and those literacy skills. Again, if you have any questions, I'm at Workman High School and uh, you can contact me. I will also send, of course, more information if you want some more information. Thank you very much.